Suave. I've been in my bag for a while, I'm invincible Story of a young boss, grinding shit critical Calling on my bros one time, cause you special I had some hood dreams and right rounds for my mentor Every target that I shoot is on point like a pencil Different routes change relationships, I'm so sorry Came up from the trenches and I made it, I say hardly now Bet Online remains your number one source for all of your college basketball betting this season Get analysis of every play, prop, and point at Bet Online. You'll find the latest odds, bracket contests, team matchups, and game trends at Bet Online. Updated odds for everything from live games, the conference championships, right through to the Final Four and championship game. Bet Online is your college basketball headquarters this season. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your bonus. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. All righty, guys. We are back with another episode of the What's in Your Bag podcast presented by Bet Online. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Robinson, and we are joined today by our superstar co host, Alexis Davis, who just got back from covering the women's Final Four out in Dallas. So, uh, Alexis, welcome to the show. Hey. Um, before we get into it, man, you got to talk to us, man. How was the, how was the women's Final Four, man? Because obviously, from from my point of view, watching back here, you know, I seen the the fireworks was in effect, man. Watching Angel Reese and uh, Caitlin Clark go back and forth, man. What was, what was the vibe like down there in Dallas? Yeah, no, it was cool. Um, I think for me, it was especially cool to go because last year I was supposed to go to the Final Four in Minnesota, and then the day I was supposed to leave, something happened, so I didn't get to go. Um, but then to get to go this year in a way bigger capacity than I would have went last time um, was definitely cool. Got to do a lot of player interviews in the locker room. Um, got to talk to Angel afterwards. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty cool. That's fire, man. We're going to uh, definitely get back into that a little bit later. You know what I'm saying? Talk, talk some Final Four, uh, some women's college hoops and stuff like that. But um, before we get into the nitty gritty, before I introduce to you guys our guests for this week, man, we got to knock the business out. You know what I'm saying? If you guys have been watching this podcast every week, you already know what I'm about to say. First and foremost, that was my guy Pull Up Tay on the intro. Uh, one of the hottest up and coming artists out of DMV. He actually just had an album drop today as of this recording. We're recording this on, uh, on Wednesday. So um, by the time you guys hear this on Monday, the album will be out already, man. Make sure you guys go stream that on Apple, Spotify, you know what I'm saying? Wherever y'all get y'all music, man the fire project um make sure you guys are liking this podcast subscribing to this podcast giving us a five-star rating it goes a long way man if y'all watching this on youtube go ahead and tap that subscribe button now you know what i'm saying it goes a long way but without further ado man we got all the business out of the way man it's time to introduce our guest for this week this guy's a guest who um man i've known for a long time almost actually more than 10 years now we're in 2023 uh, we both graduated high school classes of 2014 out of the dmv uh shit man playing the capital classic together crab ball classic together man go back to the AU day dc assault versus dc warriors man now my guy's playing out in france um we are pleased to be joined by james palmer man james what up my guy what up man how you doing man long time no see hey long time no see man glad to glad to see you doing well man doing your thing out in france you know what i'm saying um like i said it's i, I think it's always rewarding to see guys who you grew up with you know be able to go on and you know, play pro basketball and, and reach the heights that you've been able to reach. So we're definitely going to get into that later into the podcast. But, you know, before we jump into it, man, we kind of got to go back to the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Back to the, the up upbringing, obviously. Um, just talk to me about growing up, you know, in, in the DMV, the basketball scene, kind of how you got introduced to the game and uh, just kind of, you know, how they growing up in the DMV area, which is such a rich basketball, you know, area and kind of help mold you into the player that you are today. Uh, I mean, you know, growing up, basketball is it's pretty much basketball, football, what you're going to choose to do. So, uh, shit, when I was a kid, around like maybe like seven years old, I was just going to, you know, basketball course and going to the, you know, local rec centers and stuff like that. And I and I ain't played for a team on, on like no rec center team at that time. So, uh, what had happened was I was at, I was at like a rec center. Stephen Decatur, I ended up playing with Stephen Decatur. I was at Stephen Decatur Rec. And like the coach was, uh, I guess he was there or something. Like watching, watching, just watching around. We was playing like three on three, four on four. You know how it is, the kids. Yeah. And then uh, he was just like, "Come to the next practice." So I came to the next practice, and after the practice, he he gave me a jersey. 
So I me mean, getting me a jersey, I went home, you know, super excited. So my mom was like, yeah, I think I'm on the team and all this, this, and the third. So I ended up playing with Steve Nakeda as a young, young dude. And then uh, I got introduced to uh, Forestville Falcons from, from Steve Nakeda. And then, you know, going from there, playing the county ball, you know, just, just kept hooping from like different teams, triple threat, uh, DC assault when I was a young dude, uh, takeover before and then went back to takeover. Uh, and then, you know, middle school hoops and just middle school, after middle school, you know, that's when you pretty much, you know, going to decide what, what school you want to go to. But going to middle school, I didn't even know nothing about WCAC and how historical the, the, the conference was and stuff like that. So um, I ended up taking a, a visit to St. John's and uh, went to one of the games. That's when they had, like, Julian DeBose, Chris Martin, uh, Ryan McNeil. So they was pretty decent at the time. And then um, – I thought to the visit, I'm like, they got good education, good hoops, and they're one of the best conferences. So I, you know, I just gave it a try. Pretty much, I was in public school, leading all the way up, going to the Catholic school. So I knew it was gonna be pretty much kind of like different. Guy wear uniform, ties, and all that stuff. Like I ain't used to that. So then, um, when I went there, I um, mean, it was good off the court, off the court. You know, meeting new friends and stuff like that, and you know, getting to learn the, the, the Catholic school culture and stuff like that. But on the court, I feel like with that coach that they had at that time, I don't think he he gave like all the young guys a fair chance to you know to to, to pretty much shine his organization, which was cool. So I ended up going back to my public high school. Wise at the time, well, it really was that was my aunt. I just used my aunt address at the time to go there, but I went there, played varsity. You know, was was getting better each and every summer, and then uh. I probably was like 6'2 at the time, like 6'2, maybe 6'3 or something like that. I was playing point guard. And then uh that summer I grew to like 6'5. And I think I was playing with the AU summer. I think I was playing with Triple Threat. I was playing with Triple Threat. And just playing like local tournaments. You didn't really go too much. The furthest we probably went was like Delaware, something like that. But then uh that next summer is when I pretty much, you know, made a name for myself. I came back, you know, it was working out with my trainer, Kivini. Just kept getting better each and every summer. Um, and then the last summer, going into my, my senior year, I went back to takeover. I tried out for takeover. Um, and it made the EYBL team. And then, I, I, you know, you know much, pretty much all the guys that they had, Deion Wiley, Phil Booth, Trey Campbell, Big Q, OB. So I pretty much know, like, them guys already in the organization. So I know I was going to have to work three times as hard just to, you know, get some playing time. So then uh ended up making the team. We went to like the first session, the first session of EYBL, which was in, I think it was in California at the time. And I ain't really, I ain't, I ain't played that much. I probably played like, man, you play four games each week in the EYBL. I think I played like a total, probably like 15 minutes, bro, on four games. So I'm like, damn, I'm, I gotta look for another AU team. You know, it's the last summer time ticking. I mean, I had I had a couple of offers like Towson, Radford at the time. And then uh the second session, I ended up going to we ended up playing in Boo Williams in Hampton. And we was playing, you know, you might be you play all the top teams, top ranked guys, you play Oakland Soldiers, you play the Speech Indie Heat, you play the, you know, every every top 50 player in the country pretty much played in EYB. So uh we was playing Oakland Soldiers at the time. It was it was a pretty much good game. I was playing a little bit more, he gave me a little bit. A little more playing time. I was playing good when I got in. And then uh the game came out to the wire. And I ended up hitting the game winner, bro. That was like that was then like one of the best ones in my life at that time, leading up to the, you know, to that point. And after that shit, he pretty much let me go, bro. Pretty much let me rock up, let me play my game. So then I bro, after that, after I hit that game winner, my offer started going crazy. I got temple, wait for us. I had I pretty much had damn near every school out of every uh, Power Five conference, bro. So uh, at that time, you know, just just taking it all in, just you know, staying humble, staying humble at the same time. Um, and then through all throughout that summer, I just kept snapping, bro. Each each session, I got better. And then leading the Peace Jam, uh, we we was ranked we was ranked number one in the country the whole summer. We like we didn't lose a game. And then the PJ, we ended up losing to uh, each one, teach one. But they had a loaded team. They had Grayson Island, D'Angelo Russell. Uh, 
Did they have been? They might have had Ben Simmons at the time. I don't know, bro. They had a they had a squad of Joe Barry. Yeah, Joe Barry, yeah. Yeah, they had Joe Barry and all them. So they had a squad, bro. And uh we ended up losing to them or whatever. And then at that time, I ain't tell nobody, but I had already cut my list down to like five schools, which was Temple, Wake Forest, SMU, Dayton, and I think Cincinnati or something like that. But uh, so I was gonna make my I was gonna make my decision, you know, sooner or later, because I just wanted to go to senior year stress free. Don't have to worry about no, no recruitment or anything. But in, uh, after P Jam, Miami ended up offering me, right? So once they offered me, uh, you know, I I pretty I knew that the ACC was 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 good bump and stuff like that, but I didn't I didn't really much look into because they came so late, bro. So it's like I like I had no connection with them and stuff like that, and I really want to trip off Miami. But my AAU coach and then like. It started getting to my mentors and all that, like, go to Miami, go to Miami, go to Miami. So make a long story short, I ended up committing to Miami. And then when I committed to Miami, it, like, it went across, like, the uh, – it basically was, like, everywhere, bro. It, it went across, like, the Elite 24 game and stuff like that. And I ain't even playing Elite 24. But um, I ended up committing there, and I ain't even take a visit yet. <laughs> so what happened was it was, like, it was another dude, another guard that had cut his list down to uh, USF in Miami. So basically it was on some like, try to get me to commit before he commit. So I ended up committing there. Went there uh, my first two years of college. Um, good experience, bro. I can't even complain, bro. Great experience. It was a good learning curve. Um, they had a lot of other guys that I learned from. Uh, Davon Reed, uh, Kamari Murphy. I went in there with Jaquan Newton. Uh, I mean, we had a squad, bro. Honestly, our freshman year, we we did okay. Made the NIT, made it to the championship. We ended up losing losing the championship. Then that sophomore year, I came back. I was going to leave after my freshman year. Matter of fact, I was going to leave after my freshman year. The coach convinced me to come back my senior year, and uh, I mean my uh, sophomore year. So I went back, but thinking things going to change. Things ain't changed for real, which I knew pretty much, but. After that summer year, but I had my head, my, I had my mind made up, like, I'm leaving no matter what. I don't, nobody can convince me I'm leaving. So I was just working out the whole time, bro, just working out, working out, working out. I play, like, 10, 15 minutes a game, but you know how that is. Like, you run up and down the court twice, they count that as a minute in college. <laughs> so then uh, that summer year, I, I knew I was transferring. I got my, I got my, um, like, I, I forgot the name of the thing which you asked for when you about to leave, but I got that. Um, yeah, I got, I got, I got the release, and then pretty much uh, when I when I tell you, like I was going into the what is called the portal now, uh, shit, damn near all the all the schools that was offering me a high school was was coming right back, so I was blessed to have that. But then everybody asking like, why Nebraska, why Nebraska? So I took a visit to Nebraska. A coach that was in Nebraska was recruiting me in Georgetown in high school. His name was uh, King Hunter. But Georgetown never offered me, though, because, you know, they had offered trade and all that stuff. You know how the recruitment stuff goes. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, I know you probably don't. Bro, I, be honest with you, bro, I never even heard of Nebraska, bro, before I even went there. He like, he like, he like, just give me a, uh, just give me a chance and take a visit. So I'm like, all right, cool. I don't got nothing to lose. I, you know, you get five of them. Shit, this, you got five times to eat real good. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so I went there. I took I went to the visit, bro. And I just honestly, bro, as soon as I stepped on campus, bro, I fell in love, bro. You got 60,000 students. I mean, it's 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 like it's in between Iowa and Chicago, uh Midwest, I pretty much I, a place I never even been. Uh bro, they got still to this day, bro, they got the locker room. I mean, everything you think of, bro, they got top top flight um equipment, like Everything was set up, bro, for me to be, you know, to, for me to be successful. They, the, the next year coming in, uh, it was different when I was in. You like, you had to sit out a year before you could play again. So I sat out that year. I got stronger, got better, and all that stuff. And then um, that junior year, I kind of took off, bro. Like after the first two scrimmages, I pretty much knew, like, yeah, coach gonna let me. He gonna let me, you know, do what I do. Yep. yep. So, oh, take it back. Miami, I had those two years. I had average like three, average like three points. So every time, bro, every time I used to get in the game, I used to be happy. Like, as long as you don't finish with a donut, I'm good. Like, if I don't finish with zero, I'm cool. As long as I hit a little three, I'm all right. So then that junior year, going back to Nebraska, 
uh, he let me rock out. I was like 17, had first team all Big Ten. Um, you know, the accolades were coming in. Uh, finalist for Jerry West Award. Uh, shit. Uh, all the little college little, little um, awards that you could possibly, like, get. I was in the running for him. But the only thing I really got was uh, first team all Big Ten. So they was like, uh, is he going to leave? Is he going to leave, like, go to the NBA, or is he going to come back? So at that time, they had introduced, you know, test the waters. So when I tested the waters, um, I think I had like two, two or three workouts. I think I had uh, Clippers, Lakers, and Portland. But you know, at that time, you can't, you can't, you can't really talk to agents and stuff like that. So my agent was down there, my my coach, and you know how that go. They, it's, it's, he wants you to come back to school for sure. Back. So he tell me like, he tell me like, yeah, they, they want you to come back to school. They like you need to work on this and that, you know, such and such and all that. But feeling in my heart, I'm like, bro, I could leave right now. Like I'm ready. But I wasn't mad to go back to school because I knew all the guys that were do. I pretty much recruited coming there to come with me to Nebraska and the team that they already had. Like we was all coming back for the senior year. So uh, going back wasn't a big deal for me. Then when I went back, uh, some things had happened. Players got hurt um, for like a long period of time. We ain't had it. We ain't have a pretty much good year. Um, like before the year, we was it was big anticipation for us to be real good. Um, like my junior, year, we had finished like twenty two and ten, bro. Didn't even make the tournament. It was like some that that the first time that ever happened like in a long time for for having such a good record, even in the Big Ten. Like we was fourth place in the Big Ten. Uh, we played – our non-conference was good. We played Kansas. We played Creighton. We played a, a bunch of, uh, you know, good teams. But we ended up didn't, uh, didn't make it. So that senior year, I wanted to make sure that when I came back that we, you know, make the tournament. Because I already had the tournament experience. So I, I pretty much wanted to get those guys to go to the tournament, you know, to get the experience and stuff like that. But it didn't work out as planned. But uh, it was an overall uh, good three years in Nebraska, bro. I can't complain. Uh, I was blessed with the, with the, you know, with the situation and the opportunity. And those coaches up there, I love those those dudes. I still talk to those dudes to this day. Solid, solid. Now, um, you obviously you we we went through a whole a whole life story from the from the beginning of college to to you know end in Nebraska. So we're gonna take it back a little bit and rewind, man. Going back to the St. John's days. Um, yeah. Back in that day, you know, 2014. I mean, that's O'Connell was nice. Obviously, uh, Melo Trimble was at O'Connell. You know, the mm-hmm. math, the math, the, you know, Paul Six was still like that. You know what I'm saying? There was a bunch of schools in the, and, you know, obviously Gonzaga. Like, it was a bunch of programs in WCC. We can go down the line, you know, um, with some of the talent that was in the area. Who were some of your favorite matchups from the WCAC back then and kind of some of the players who you look forward to? Or maybe favorite uh, favorite memory you could have from kind of a, a matchup from back in the WCAC? Uh. WCAC used to bump good. Uh, probably matchup versus O'Connell. You know, me and Melo used to go at it. We ain't never really guard each other, but it was like, you know, best player, best player. And then you got a uh, – you you obviously got PVI because of the takeover guy, so you know you want to beat them. Then you got uh, you got the Matha just because, you know, some of those guys take over guys too. And then the Matha, who they had at the time? Uh, I was trying to think too. 2014, the math. 2014, that might have been. No, because yeah. my junior year, that's when they had Jarris and BJ. My senior year, that's when they had. Uh, I think that was Corey Henson senior year. Corey Henson. Yep, it was. Yeah, that was Corey and them team. But yeah, probably, probably the Henson. best, the, the best right matchup, bro. Huh? No, I hear. And then Gonzaga has some young dudes like Brian Crawford. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 got, they, had, they had Tavon, they had Tavon Blackman, Chuck, and all them, Chris Jenkins. Yeah. But that was that was that was my junior year too. Yeah, the senior year they had the young guys too. But the best matchup part overall was probably like, you know, me and Melo. I think that's what I would say. Yeah. It was a game, bro. We played, we played Ed O'Connell, bro. I forgot. Was it? I don't think it was their senior night. Um, me and Melo had like thirty apiece. He had thirty, and I had thirty. But we ended up coming out on the win. And then we turned around and seen them, bro, like first round. No, we seen them in the championship. Seen them in the championship, we ended up losing. You know, they had Junior and all them. Yep. 
We ended up losing, bro. Bro, I swear to God, bro. He was he was bugging. He probably had like <laughs> he probably had like 20, 25 leading into the half. He he ended up finished with probably, I think he finished with 30 though, but he was bugging, bro. That was I mean that me WC she was always good bump though, but you had a lot of teams that always had some type of talent or some type of D1 D1 talent on their team. So pretty much every team was every night was, you know, trying to lace your shoes up. You talked about going, being at St. John's, going to Wise. Um, did you always have in your plan to go back to St. John's or was it just more so like, okay, now I feel like I fit here a little bit more, so let me try to run it back? No, honestly, uh, all right, so this is the rundown. I, 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 um, when I went to Wise and then, uh, you know, played that year and then going to that summer, I, ended up, I was playing with TakeOver B team. And when I was playing with the B team, St. John's had fired the coach that they had was was uh the Stefano at the time and they had hired Sean McAllen, who was at IMG now. Um he was like, you know, I heard your story, I uh, heard you was at St. John's and you know, I would love for you to come back. So I talked to like my inner circle and my and my peoples and he was like, I want I really I was gonna stay at Wise. I didn't even care about because I knew you get your office from summer. It was different, it was different now how you get your office during the school year, but I was cool at staying at Wise, but everybody was like, you know, better education and, you know, better competition was, you know, to go back to St. John's. So I ended up going back to St. John's and, you know, it worked out that way. That would have been, that would have been crazy. You stayed at Wise. I remember 2014, we played Wise at Comcast in Maryland Final Four, man, the year they won states. Yeah. That would have been crazy. You would have been in PG County. Um, before we switch gears, man, I want to, you know, while we're talking about St. John's, obviously, you know, they won the WCAC this year, and uh, they made national news because obviously, you know, coach over there is, is battling with with ALS, and you yeah, know, I think it's obviously an improbable job that he been able to do this year. And the whole staff, you know, and, and supporting coach, and um, obviously, you know, fighting through, you know, that that terrible disease. But um, which I mean, what's your thoughts on just you know, number one, the whole situation there, you know, what I'm saying with with the team this year, uh, how they were able to kind of win it despite you know, what, what coach is going through with the ALS. And then um, have you had a chance to meet him at all or have any interactions with him um, at all? And then it's so like, you know, what are your thoughts on just the kind of person he is and, and that kind of stuff? Bro, the crazy thing is, bro, the coach, the coach that's there now was the, was the, was the like second assistant when I was there. Wow. So when, when he, when, when I was a senior, when I was a junior senior, Sean McAloon brought him, they brought, he brought him and he brought this other dude, and I don't think the other dude is there no more, but he brought, that's Pat. He brought Pat with him. And uh, I think they came from Benedictine or whatever. Mm. So, yeah, I knew Pat from 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 a long time. And when I found out the situation, you know, I was overseas. So it was like, it was pretty much, it was little too much I could do. And I, I ain't have his contact, but I ended up, ended up contacting him, you know, saying, make sure, make sure he was all right and all that stuff. But that's when he was like, they first had figured out and, you know, it was kind of even like, not knock on wood, but even kind of like he was kind of looking like like he was going through it. So I didn't want to, you know, pretty much just keep hitting him up. And even though I can't do nothing for him, you, you know, when I was over here. So, uh, yeah, I, I, we had a good relationship, bro. He a good dude. Um, he, he pretty much quiet. He don't really say too much. I don't know how he is as a head coach now, but as a person, he's a good dude. Uh, you know, he makes sure you're straight. Uh, he was a funny dude. Um, you know, just an overall great guy. Um, he ain't. He used to I actually used to wake me out sometimes, like before practice and stuff like that. So um I never forget, you know, a dude that that's willing to do that. Early on, you mentioned training with Keith Vini as well. Can you kind of just talk about how that added to just your overall, you know, skill set, you know, doing more than what's asked in practice, kind of doing your own thing, kind of, and how he kind of added to you basically playing at another level. Um all right, so I met him back when I said when I was like seven years old when I first started. After that, after that, that rec year lead with Stephen Decatur. Um, when I got with Forsville, one of the coaches, my mom had asked him like, "Yo, he needed he need a trainer. Like, I think he should get a trainer." And uh, she and he, one of my coaches like already knew Kevini, so he introduced me to him. And where I went from from damn near like nine years old all the way to to this day, so I've been training with him for. Then like that's it's been a long time basically. So uh, he damn near like a, a mentor, father figure, 
trainer, like a a life coach. He he everything you know you can think of and more. He always gonna keep it a hundred with you. And uh, as far as the basketball go, I have always been a player like. All right, we got practice, but I, I like to work on my own game as well. You know what I'm saying? So I used to always, before, like, we have school, I'll, I'll work out. We had practice, and I'll go from practice to, to go work out with Keith So I'll be getting home around, like, 11, 12 on the school night each week. So yeah, every time I, I knew I worked out with him, I was, I was feeling myself getting better, and he was pushing me to my limit. So, um, and, I seen, and I seen the transformation in my game each and every year and each and every summer, so. Um, you know, I thank him for that, and and it pretty much, you know, got me to where I get, where I'm at today. Um, now you kind of talked about you know working with Keith Meany and you know uh, playing on Takeover's B team and like you know kind of having a you know your first EYBL tournament Takeover playing a total of 15 minutes throughout the first four games of that session, um, and then you kind of blew up. Man, I feel like just from the outside looking in, being somebody who was able to watch your game develop uh, from the outside looking in. You know, it seems like you were kind of like that that late bloomer. You know, it's like you always had game, but like it took a while for other people to kind of catch on to it. And you know, eventually you were able to get ranked in the top 100. Um, you know, your your I believe it was your senior year. Um, just talk about just what what that was like for you, man. Coming from a guy who was under the radar and you know never really had the the recognition, you know, from from anybody else, and then to be able to kind of rank in the top 100. Um, coming from where we come from, you know, where. Everybody don't get that 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 uh, type of recognition, you know. what I'm Saying what yeah. was that like for you, man, and what was that moment like for you? Um, when I the crazy thing is, before I even got ranked, bro, like that last summer when I when I knew I was gonna be playing against all them top ranked guys and ESPN and on rivals and stuff like that, bro. I used to always like, not always like I wanted to be ranked, but I used to always just keep up with the rankings for some reason. That was just like a thing when you know watching ballers like mixtapes and stuff. Like who is this? You know, then you look them up and you see their rankings and stuff like that. So. Every time in EYB, bro, we used to play like a, a ranked dude. I used to like make sure like I need to kill him or, or, or make sure, you know, I play good to get some type of recognition. So I guess, you know, at the end of the summer, they end up working out and I, and I end up getting ranked in the top 100, which I was blessed to be. But I didn't, I wasn't really cheering about the, about the rankings because it was like, I knew I wanted a guy that was going to be like a top 10 guy or a one and done guy or a two and done guy. So, um, like I said, it was, it was, it was a good accomplishment at the time. You know, but I wasn't really, I wasn't pretty much like super ecstatic over the over the over the ranking and stuff like that. But um, yeah, man, it was it was it was pretty cool at the time, though. Um, I kind of asked, man, kind of switching gears a little bit to the college choice, man. I think when we look at today's landscape of college basketball and NIL, and um, I'm looking at Miami, which was a school that you ended up committing to out of out of high school, right? And they got this guy John Ruiz who's throwing all these big time NIL bags to the guys. Nigel Pack allegedly was getting like 800k for two years, transfer from Kansas State. Yeah. Um, uh Omer, Isaiah Wong, all those guys was getting six figures. Like you would think back, like, damn, y'all wish they would have had NIL back then, you know what I'm saying? Or even when you were transferring, like what, what that bread would have been like for you coming out of uh, high school to Miami or entering that portal and then going to a school like like Nebraska, who I've heard got big time NIL bread nowadays. Yeah. Bro, the I mean, I be I be telling like you know you got Americans on each team overseas, so like whenever we you know the Americans get together to chop it up, I be telling them, like bro, if, when I was in college, if I would have had nil, bro, in Nebraska, not Miami, Miami, I ain't really had no stain and you know had no pool like that. But when I was in Nebraska and I was hooping how I was and you know mean mean uh sponsors and you know mean you know just mean a bunch of different people like bro, it was it got to a point like off the court like. Even when I was to go grocery shopping, everybody just noticed you or stuff like that. You know, it's pretty much like every time I step in the public eye, like somebody going to notice you. So like bro, I used to walk around with hoods on and stuff. Not like it was it wasn't like that bad, like paparazzi, but I used to like walk around with hoods on just to like be unnoticed and just walk around as a regular dude. But uh, if they if I had, you know, when I was in college, I think I pretty much think I probably would have, you know, about to have a couple good deals. I want to say I would be like a 800,000 type of guy like that's that's good money right there. People don't even get that to this day as a grown man. So um, I, I think I probably would have had a, a couple good NIL deals, though, honestly. But yeah, the, the way the way they the way they working it now, man. I mean, I don't blame them. I if it was me, I would stay in college all four years, bro. Back. Unless I knew, unless unless I knew, like, 
if it's my time to go to the league, like it's unless I'm, I know I'm, I'm certified first round. Other than that, bro, I stay in college, bro. The, the way this and I don't the way they, the deals I see now is crazy. Back. So with like the NIL as well, you know, there's also still that school component. Like you still got to go to class, still got to do academic stuff. So what do you think that kind of does for people where, because for some people, school is just not, it's just not their thing. Like they don't enjoy class. It's just a drag. So do you feel like those resources are there? So like if you're staying longer for NIL, that means you, you got to take more classes, you know, because you're trying to get the degree. So do right. you think the resources as far as like, passing class are there or do you think like a little bit more could be done uh as far as that go i, I think with with when you get so much money it's gonna be hard for for, for athletes to, to focus on you know school and stuff like that and, and going even going to class or, or making sure they pass their class but even without the nil when i was in college the the, the school and the um like your your sports, they do a they do a pretty good job of make sure, you know, you stay on top of your grades and make sure you got tutors to help you with your work and and homework and stuff like that. So, um, sometimes kids struggle even though just because they don't want to put the only way you can really struggle in college as a, as an athlete is if you don't really want to do nothing at all. Like they all the resources are there. They got the tutors for you. You got your you got everything you need. You they you even got a um an academic lady that that'll sit down and help you write a paper. Like it's it's crazy and, and as a sports athlete that a lot of kids don't know coming in. They think it's just like, oh, it's just school, but but like I said, it would be tough getting so much money. And uh like me, I wasn't a, I wasn't a heavy school guy, but I just made sure when it was time to, you know, get good grades that I, I made sure I did that and certain make sure I do my papers, make sure I pass the tests and stuff like that. So um Thanks. But yeah, like other than that, you got you, you got every resource that you pretty much need. Thanks. So um, before we get into your, you know, the, the pro journey and kind of what came with that, um, I want to ask you about something that uh, happened a little bit younger, a little bit earlier uh, in your development, which obviously, you know, your, your dad passing away. And, yeah. you know, for me, I can relate to that, you know, myself, because I lost both of my parents. My mom passed away in, in 2016. My dad passed away in 2015. And I know kind of what that um, is like to, to lose a parent and to have to deal with grief, especially while trying to play basketball. Um, just for you, talk about, uh, I guess, going through that loss at such a young age and kind of how that affected you growing up and then how you were kind of able to uh, persevere past that and continue to stay focused and, and stay committed to you know the ultimate goal, which was you know making it to this level that you're at now. Uh. I mean, like you said, you know, it's tough as 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 a young dude, you know, losing losing like basically like your best friend. So all I have is my mom. So uh I mean when I lost him, bro, like I, I was I pretty much out of like I used to still love basketball and stuff, but like I think I probably like I probably missed I was in middle school at the time. I think I missed like bro after that, I probably missed like two, three months straight. Like I ain't wanna see nobody. My ain't my temperament was crazy. I had bad temper. Um and pretty much, like basically that whole year was kind of tough. So then that that going into that summer, um, like actually I still had Keith Vini at the time. So like he kind of stepped in, like I said, as a father figure and, and a life coach. And you know, uh, it, it can it, it pretty much made me uh, mentally tougher. So uh, without without that, I don't I don't know how strong I would be mentally if it if it weren't for that. Honestly, bro, because like it's certain stuff that going in my life now that. I, I I won't even trip about, but if I was younger, like it it affect me on and off the court. But now, like that, now that I'm so mentally strong and and pretty much done seen and 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 been through everything in life, like it is, it's just like it is what it is. It, it is what it is type of thing. So, shout out to Kevini, bro. Like he he really stepped up and, and and made sure that I was straight. I ain't even saying like like buying stuff for me, nothing like that. I'm just saying like being there or or. Make it just talking to me and have man to man conversation as a young kid. 
So how would you say that kind of help you put stuff in perspective? Like if it's something that's happened, it's like, okay, that's not, that's not too deep. And then also, yeah. So basically how to differentiate when stuff is really that deep or not necessarily, you know, worth your time. And then also like, how does that, how did that kind of transfer over into your other relationships? Like, did it make you value your friends more? Did it kind of make you look at time a little bit differently? Like, did it kind of transfer over there too? No, nah, it definitely, it definitely transferred. Uh, I look at friendships way different. Um, like I, I got maybe three, four best friends back at the crib that I talk to each and every day. Um, it make you, it make you, obviously it make you, you know, realize that, you know, life is short and and, and don't take nothing for granted. But as far as, you know, realizing how, how deep situations is and stuff like that, uh, like, now, now, like if it's a, if it's a real, real deep conversation, I mean, situation like out, I'm I know how to handle it better now. Like uh, I'm a better communicator with, with when it comes to stuff like that. But if it's if it's something that that ain't that serious, I don't even think I'll put my energy into it pretty much. But with that shit, with that whole situation happened, it helped me. Like I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of hard to explain. Like I don't. It's pretty much it's like a. I think positive all the time now, pretty much. That's what I would say. Um, I think something that you said was, was super valuable and super important, something that I could relate to as well. When you we talked about having somebody to have those man-to-man conversations with and how, you know, Keith, Keith Beanie kind of stepped in to kind of play that, you know, father figure type of role. And I can remember growing up, you know, being raised by a single mom, like not having my, my dad around. I had multiple men in my life that kind of played that role for me. You know, my Uncle Rick, you know, both my uncles, my Uncle Rick and my Uncle Mike, but also, man, Coach Tony. Um, yeah. Warriors, man, Coach Tony was like, he was that guy for me, you know what I'm saying? From like teaching me how to like, how to operate as a man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, I remember my first, back like when I played football, Tacoma Park Rams, like I was coming to football practice with like no socks on, just cleats. He's like, nah, young man, you gotta put the socks on, you know what I'm saying? He bought me my first pair of basketball shoes, like um, making sure we had like boots and, and during Christmas, cause I was wearing my regular shoes, like in the snow, you know what I'm saying? like. He told me like to, you know, when you leave the gym, you put on flip-flops so your feet can rest. You know, you're not wearing like shoes all day and like all type of different stuff, man, that he taught me how to be on time, like how to work hard. Like, um, cause you know, as a younger man, you go on, you might go to the court outside, you might shoot one shot, it bounce to the other side, you do a move, do a layup, and like you out, you might be out there for three hours, but you're not really working out. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. taught me really how to go in the gym and like work hard and focus on a goal and like. I mean, he changed my life, honestly. And um, I just wanted to talk to you about just, you know, the value of having, you know, whether it's family, whether it's mentors, be able to step into, into that role and kind of just teach teach those lessons, man, that sometimes you need. Because obviously, you know, a mom, my, my mom was like superwoman. You know what I'm saying? She did everything for me, you know, especially right. not my dad around and definitely got to give her flowers for raising me and my brothers. But it's some things you do need like a man to teach you, you know, and a man to kind of be able to show you and things like that. So um, I want to kind of just ask you just, you know, just about just the the value of that, having having mentors or father figures in your life um, that can kind of help you along the way. Uh, uh, piggyback on what you said, yes, definitely. You definitely need like a, a father figure in your life, bro. I, I would, I would, I wouldn't wish that on nobody to lose any, any parent, mom or dad, because you, you need both to, in my opinion. In certain situations, but like, I feel like when you when you don't have one or the other, it it you know it makes you you know obviously it makes you stronger in in, in other areas that you wouldn't expect. Um, and as far as like, damn, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, now nah, you good, bro? It's definitely what, run it, run it back, run run it back. What was, what was the? Yeah, so I'm saying like, how how do you think just having like mentors and, and other people in your life that can kind of step into that role. Um, what, what, what value do you think that has? Or I guess in, in a, in a different sense, like I think it, you mentioned Keith Beanie, right? I'm talking about coach Tony, who was that for me, Mike, yeah. Tony, Ace, like these guys are, you know, basketball trainers and coaches and things like that. But like, you know, these guys are also man, father figures for a lot of guys in, in low income neighborhoods or in, in, the, in the city who might not have the same resources, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I guess my question to you is like, you know, how valuable was it to have a guy like, you know, Keith Beanie, who is a trainer and a basketball coach, but can also be able to pour into you and like 
teach you things uh, in a different role, like you know, kind of in that father figure role as well, um, outside of basketball. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, that that that's definitely uh, it's definitely uh, real important um, to have to have that. I feel like, bro, you should, I should, even if you do have both parents, you should have a mentor because, like, you might you might feel more comfortable talking to your mentor about certain stuff that you want to talk to your parents about. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it was times, it was times, like, it was stuff that I'd talk about. I'd talk about the key Vini, but I want to talk about to my mom. You feel me? Because I knew, like, he wouldn't go back and tell her, oh, you know, James told me this. And, and she'd be like, oh, why you didn't tell me that? You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, when I was younger, like, it was, it was a lot of that, bro. It was a lot of that, like, Telling Kivini something and, and and don't tell my mom. You feel me? Just just cause like I feel I feel more secure when I was telling like a, a man. You know what I mean? Right. So like, I mean, but now like as I got older, it's changed. Like I I, I talk to my mom about anything now. Pretty much like anything anything I need to talk about anything that's on my mind. Like I talk to my mom now. Like she like my best friend now. But when I was younger, like you you need you need like a father figure to, to tell you like little stuff in life, like little things that you want to think is important, but it, it really be important. Like yes. make sure you open the door for people, you know, stuff, little stuff like that. Like make sure you own a belt, like little stuff like that, bro. Like just, just little stuff that I feel like is very important for you need a, 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 a man in your life. Cause like, you know, pretty much how we, how we see it at the crib, like you could tell when somebody don't pretty much have good home training or, or, or don't have a pop, like you, you can pretty much tell just by how they act or how they think or just by their attitude. So I think it's real important, bro. Um, so kind of on that same note, what do you think about just, I guess you could say just men in general asking for help? I've noticed sometimes like it's more of a, sometimes they look at it as if they asking for help, it's like they, they make it seem like they feel less than or they're not you know men are supposed to handle everything on their own they're supposed to have it together can't cry in big settings you know and if you cried when the door was closed you shouldn't have did that either so like how do you think that kind of seeing that you value the people around you how do you think that's made it kind of easier for you to ask for help in certain situations uh i mean yeah i mean yeah you got you got to kind of like grow into that and to like uh, helping from because you know growing up is you got to be tough don't cry you know like you said just man don't do this man don't do that you know what I mean but men got feelings too so like it's it's good to ask ask questions or if you need help ask ask, ask your friend ask your ask your, uh, your pop or ask your mentor or, or ask whoever it, it, it whatever the uh, situation may be but um like I said it, it's, it's good to ask for help or or, or even cry like It'd be times I'd cry by myself. I wouldn't cry in like a big setting, obviously, but I'll cry like by myself or, you know, just to get it out. If you hold all that in, like it's, I don't, it, it ain't, you know, everybody knows it's not healthy for you to hold everything in, but um, yeah, but ask for help. I mean, it's it's tough. It's it's kind of tough because like, it's like a win-win or a lose-lose. Um, if you ask for help, you know, people might ask, oh, he not tough or he not strong enough or he not a man, but it's times men need help too, or, or even just like mental health and any little thing. Like it's, it's good, it's good to talk or relieve, uh, relieve your stress and and whatever you got going on, just just get it out. That's good, man. That's good. I feel like you know, folks listening, man. If if you're going through some man, woman, and different man, ain't nothing wrong with seeking help. Ain't nothing wrong with you know crying and and being able to kind of express your emotions in a healthy way. You know what I'm saying? So that's good, man. Um, but. Change the gears a little bit. I want to talk about, you know, post-college, right? You you go through the summer league, you know, you go through the whole NBA draft process, and uh you end up signing the training camp deal, you know, with the with the Clippers. You know, you're on the verge of you know reaching your your dreams, uh making it to the league and stuff like that. And you know, you terrorize the G League, you know, with, with the Clippers G League team. Um from the outside looking in, right, I'm looking at it like, damn, bro, when is when is James getting the call up, bro? Like, when is this happening? He's murking the G. He got all the physical intangibles, you know, to be in the NBA. I think for you, I wanted to ask you, like, what was what do you think was the hardest part about that year, man? Like, just being so close to the league, finding the G League the whole season, and then being like, damn, like, you know, where is my opportunity at? Like, you know, just kind of reflect on that time period where you know you're right there knocking on on, on the door of the NBA. And um, I guess what that whole experience was like. 
I mean, uh, it was it was a great experience, bro. Coming out of college, uh, it's like you 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 always want to be a pro, but you don't know what to expect as far as the business side of things. That's what a lot of kids don't know. Like they they ready to be pros and stuff like that, but you don't you don't know like the what goes on behind closed doors kind of thing. So uh, when I came out, you know, went to training camp. I, I was I was hooping at training camp too, bro. Cause like Kawhi and PG, they was hurt, so like. There was a lot of young guys got opportunities, and and and, and I had a, a coaching staff with all black coaches, so it was pretty much harping on like, oh yeah, I know you did this in Nebraska, so we gonna let you, you know, saying they let me hoop, and I was I was doing my thing, bro, but I was, it was like a, it's almost like a thing, but like I have a, how I want to say, I have like a, a, it's like one of the things, like bro, I think I'm one of the best players in the world, but I don't I don't tell everybody or show like, you know, I'm a cocky dude, but like in my mind. I think I'm crazy, you know what I'm saying? So I, it's like it's like I I think crazy. So that's why I feel like I got you know this far in my life as far as basketball go. But um, for that situation, that rookie year, bro, like I like you said, bro, I was I was snapping. Bro. My first pro, my first professional basketball game, bro, I had forty, bro. I had forty, and then like the next game, I had like thirty six. Then the next game after that, I had like thirty three, and then. I think the, the game the next week I had 31 and then it went to like 28, 24. And then I had a 30 ball. And like, bro, I was, I was wild and bro. I was playing like some of my best basketball I ever played in my life. But I always thought, bro, like doing that situation, I'd be like, it is what it is, bro. I ain't going to call up cool. Like I, I never, I never was guy be like, damn, he got a call up. I can't get a call up. You know what I'm saying? I, I never was that, was that type of dude. Like I don't, I don't really chip off another man's success. You feel me? So I, I feel like if my time will come, it's going to come. If it don't, I guess it ain't meant to be. That's how I think. Like if, if it don't happen, it just it just ain't meant to be. You know what I'm saying? So and that that uh that rookie year I had got hurt too. I had crazy tendonitis. That's another reason why I was telling you before the before the show, like why why I uh started being a pescatarian. Cause I feel like that the no homo, that meat and shit was like inflation in, in the body. And when I changed, like I don't really have I don't really have that no more. So um I had I had crazy tendonitis like midway to because you know that's the same year COVID came as well so they cut the season kind of short right before the playoffs so uh kind of like midway to the end of the season I started getting tendonitis but I was still playing through it but then like bro this one game bro it was it got real real bad like I'm talking like I'm running up and down the court limping but I still had like 24 like the G League bro I feel like the G League is easy bro to even to this day I just feel like it's easy so I, I was limping but still hooping and then like the next game I'm limping even worse then the next game after that, I could barely run, barely like barely walk type of thing. Walk, I'm walking with a limp now. So like, and then at that time, and, and when you first coming out, a lot of people don't know, but like when you when you when you were professional in 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 that like the NBA or G League or whatever, and they feel like you got just a little nagging injury because it's like ten nights, everybody ten nights, bro. It ain't like you got MCL, or ACL, you know what I'm saying? So like. It's like a play through a type of thing, and I don't want to sit out because if I sit out, they gonna bring the next man, and then when they bring the next man, if he who, when I come back, it's done. You feel me? So I was like, I ain't trying to sit out, but I end up had to force myself to sit out, and uh, I end up missing like ten games. But during the stretch of those ten games, maybe if I would have got injured just a little later, um, during the stretch of those ten games, you have a, a Las Vegas showcase when the G League do like you know each year. And you play four, you play what two games, I think? Two games or four games, whatever it is. Um teams, every, every, every NBA team is 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 there watching. So when I was there, I met with uh I met with the Charlotte Hornets and I had met with the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Charlotte, Charlotte was trying to offer like a two-way, and Cleveland was trying to offer me a deal, but I'm like, they like, are you gonna play? I'm like, bro, I can't play. Like, I'm there's no way I'm finna not come out there and look hundred percent. Like I'm not finna go out there and make myself look bad. So like, I mean they 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 did what they did. They they gave I guess they gave it did to somebody else and gave the two way to somebody else. Which which I can't complain. I was hurt. What they they can't give it to somebody that's hurt. You feel me? So like, I just felt like maybe it wasn't meant to be. But that's the same year COVID hit, bro. So I'm like, yeah, I guess it was a blessing in disguise, bro. You said that the G League is easy, and I think so many people think because such, it's such a close affiliate to the NBA that it wouldn't be easy. So what? Why? Why do you say it's easy? Just, just 
I, I'm about to joke, but I, let me stop playing. I'm about to say just because I'm crazy like that, but uh, the G League is is all right. Let me put it like this: It's easy if you have if you have a, a or are you on the organization where they let you play your game or like obviously you know you have to be playing to you know and, uh, be producing to to uh, to get an opportunity and stuff like that. But as far as when I say it's being easy, it's because. It's fast paced up and down, up and down, up and down. It's a lot of possessions in the game. It's a lot of points being scored. You might have three people on one team to get 30 points. And then you might have another uh, somebody else on the other team. He might have 50 points by himself. You know what I'm saying? So you're not, it's, it's, it's not that much defense being played. It's a lot of space on the court. Like the courts are way bigger than here overseas. Um, oh, they don't have three seconds like here overseas. So nobody can sit in the paint. Um, like I said, it's just so much space and, and so much opportunity to do whatever you want. Like you could get in the that's why so many people get get dunked on and, and it'd be so many highlight plays in the NBA because you already can't sit in the paint and then you got so many athletic guys and no homo, like long guys with, with long arms and, and, and that could jump out the gym that when they get that little space of opportunity, like it's you know, they they're gonna put on the show every time. So um it's the same as in the G, honestly. Like it's not that much defense being played. Um, once you get past your man, you pretty much got a bucket. Or if you help, you could do a move and, and score on him as well. So, like, um, like it's so much opportunity to do whatever you want. And, and once you get it going, like, you might have a game you had 20, and then once you get it going, 20, 25, 30, you could, you could go up for damn near 70 points if you get it going. So, like, that's why I say it's easy because it, – even before I even got there, like, I mean, I was watching highlights. You see a lot of guys get off in G League, average 35, average 38. Like, I was like, damn. And then when I got there, I was like, okay, I see why. Thanks. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the G League, just, you know, from comparing it to watching overseas and G League, it's a lot more spacing in the G League, bro. And like you said, dudes are already playing defense like that. Like, I remember it was uh, the year before last, man, Isaiah Thomas came back to the G League, was getting 50. Nick Thauskas came from overseas. To the G League was getting 50. I'm like, yo, how are everybody scoring 50 in the G? Like, bro, yeah, bro. And, and you got to realize, like, bro, you played overseas, bro. You know, it's it's, it's way more physical over. Yeah. Like, guys in the NBA look bigger and they might be stronger, but you know how, the, you know how overseas is, bro. The coach, he'll tell you to foul. Like, yeah. he might tell you to don't let him score or foul him. Like, yeah. he'll tell you, like, get two fouls. And I'll be looking at him like, bro, what? Yeah. So when I, when I, I mean, I'm used to it now that I've been over here for this, my second year, been over here, but like, Guys, like, it's way more physical over here. Like, they, they, I feel like over here, they take this shit way more personal Hell than yeah. getting scored on them because they know the coach going to be on their ass, obviously. But this feel like it's this because they so up unathletic over here as well. Like, you, they, they more smart. They, so they, they play, they might play positioning or they might play like trying to beat you to the spot. But they overall, like, they, they know they can't stay in front of you, honestly. So they're going to try to do whatever they take to try to slow you down. But in the league, you know, they trying to use athleticism and stuff like that, and they just just out there playing like they. There's some players that play physical, honestly, but for the for the majority, like no, it's 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 not that much defense being played, bro. Now I wanted to ask you, man, like what kind of went into the decision, right? Because the first two years you did the G League training camp, and you you know, like I said, bro, for me, from knowing you, damn near my whole life, seeing you your story, bro. I'm like, yo, James is an NBA player. Like, he could have played in the league. Like, the way you were doing the G, you know what I'm saying? Like, so for me, I was like, dang, like, like I said, how bro didn't get a call up? And obviously, you ended up going from the G League last year in Poland, now you're in France. So talk me through that decision process for you, where you're like, you know what, man, I'm done with the G. I'm done chasing the league. I'm about to go overseas and, and get this paper. You know what I'm saying? Play Champions League and stuff like that. I can be sure y'all, I think y'all Euro Cup, like. yeah. What went into your decision to, like, make that move from trying to chase the league to, all right, you know what, I'm going to just go overseas and, and do something different? Like, what went through your mind to kind of making that decision? Excuse me. Uh, bro, when I first – all right, let me put it like that. When I first came out of school, I was thinking, like, in my head, like, well, I would never go overseas, bro, like that. I'm never going that far away from home because, like, my freshman year, we did, like, a foreign trip. We went to Spain, and I hated the food, like – you know, I'm fresh out of high school as well, too. So I hated the food in Spain. I'm like, food trash, bro. And like, the people here weird. They don't speak English. Like, bro, what am what I'm gonna do? You feel me? So when I came out of school, I'm like, bro, I'm never going to overseas. So during the first two years, I mean, honestly, bro, if it probably to be honest with you, bro, if it probably for for COVID, 
I might have tried the G last year again, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, just 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 leaking, just on the outside looking in, maybe I might have tried the G League again. But that second year, once COVID hit, and I'm like, bro, it was only a month season. And then, you know, everything was kind of shut down in the world. I'm like, bro, we damn near in a recession. I need some bread, bro. Like, you feel me? Like, you you get some bread. Like, you get some little bread in the G. But that that 35000 on compared to 170 to to 180 to 200 to 300 You know what I'm saying? So, you basically, you 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 betting on yourself. Like, just trying to do the G each and every year because you don't, if you don't got no uh, other other avenues of, of income, you don't have you don't have that much money playing the G League, bro. So, uh, it was it was more of a of a all right, the league bullshit as well. I'm gonna just go ahead go over uh, go go to Europe and 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 try to be you know one of the best players in Europe. So, uh, I mean, I, I like the path that I'm on right now. I went to Poland last year, played in the Champions League, played good there. Uh, my agent got me you know got me a better job. Came here at Euro Cup. We was number one in Euro Cup. That we'd be like, we finished like top five. I mean, we got playoffs starting soon, but um, playing good in Euro Cup, and playing good in the French league. So, bro, I can't complain, bro. It's, it's, it's all been a blessing. That's good. That's major. Um, I think, I think, you know, what, what do you think was the hardest part adjusting from when you first went from the G League to overseas? Because you mentioned number one. On the court, it's a completely different game as far as the way the refs call it, as far as the FIBA rules, as far as the physicality, as far as the coaching, right? And then number two, you're in Poland, you're not in L.A. or in the mm-hmm. state, a different language, different food. So what was that adjustment period like, you know, when you first got overseas uh, from, from, from you know, the States? Um, when I first got overseas, bro, I just – I mean – like I said, I'm to the point now, like, I, I kind of think everything positive. But I used to always used to joke, like, damn, I miss L.A., especially during the winter. Like, damn, I miss L.A., bro. I don't know. Like, this Polish, this Poland trash, like, you know, as far as off the court. But, uh, I mean, they had nice people, bro, good food. Um, you know, learn some little cultural things out there. You learn a little bit of the language. You've been there for 10 months, so you don't, you don't, you really much, pretty much don't have a choice but to learn the language and the culture and stuff and how they do things and stuff like that out there. But uh it's it's i mean it, it was it was it was good and it was bad to, to being out there like the, the good things uh it was so much cheaper like the currency is four to one so like it might be it might be twelve dollars in the states but it's only like three dollars in europe i mean three dollars in poland so like it was, it was pretty good bro i mean i learned a lot and uh honestly bro it helped me grow it helped me grow it helped me grow as a person it got it helped me get out you know those little ignorant ways of of, of doing little stuff and, you know, just get out to a circle and try to try new things. Um, how would you, how would you describe the the French league? Because a couple of weeks ago, we had a uh, Kyle Allman Jr. On the podcast. He plays for Paris basket. Um, shout out to my guy. Um, but that league is tough. You know, you got Asvel, you got, you know, obviously it was Euro league. You got Monaco and Mike James, Euro league. You know, you got, Number one pick in the draft, you know, Victor Wembanyama's out there in France. Like it's it's bump out there. So, yeah. you know, how would you describe just playing in the French league, um, the talent level, and just you know what it's been like, you know, playing out out there this year? Uh, I mean, like it, like you said, it's a lot of talent, bro. Um, Kyle, my guy too. Shout out to Kyle. Um, yeah. it's a lot of bump, bro. I think it's down there. Like, I mean, the G League got uh, probably more teams, but as far as like people. The players that can hoop, or like the play, the Americans, like you, it's you got pretty much a lot of players that probably can play in the NBA as well. So, um, the talent level is crazy out here, bro. It's it's the French league is is it's an athletic league. It's up and down. It's faster than most leagues. Um, most leagues like to play, you know, s- slow it down and, and run the offense type of thing. But French league, it's certain times where you definitely you know run the offense and stuff like that. But it's kind of up and down as well. Um, and then you know you playing in France, you get to go to to experience different new new spots. You got Paris, you got when Biyama team is in Paris, then you got the Paris basketball team with Kyle team. I mean, you got there's another team in Paris too, uh Nantier. Mm. You got uh I mean you you experience different little places in Paris, but as far I mean in France, but as far as the uh, the league go, a lot of it's a lot of players, bro, that you wouldn't even think. But when you see them play like, oh, I think he could play in the league or 
could be a three and D type of guy, who could be a six man type of guy. You know what I'm saying? Just seeing, just seeing it all each and every night. So, and we playing Euro Cup. So you playing twice a week, two hard games. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 and it's a long season. So it's like it's like a mental thing, bro. You got to lock in. You got to lock in and, and be laser focused, especially on game day. You you talk about. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm mean, go ahead. Like, I asked it after. Oh no! So earlier you were talking about the main trans. The main reason why you transitioned overseas was, you know, it was like, okay, at this point, I need to get some money. I need to, you know, get on this opportunity while I can, et cetera. So. I've kind of noticed, you know, just being from the DMV, et cetera, like, you know, a lot of young Black people from the DMV, we spend money, we buy clothes, we put together fits, we post in, like, that's just, it's just what you, I wouldn't just say it's a DMV thing, but that's just what I can speak from, because that's, you know, where I live or whatever, but yeah. I would say when you started, you know, a lot of people, they're like, oh, well, if I just had $200, if I just had $300, I would be able to spend my money more wisely. I'd be able to manage my money. Like they think it's because they don't have enough that that's why they're not managing it. So now that you, you know, if I'm assuming wrong, let me know. But now you're probably making the most money that you, you know, probably made with basketball right now. So how would you say you've kind of had to grow up as far as money management? Uh, I mean, it's crazy that you said it because like, in my first couple of years out of school, like I wasn't just blowing through my money, obviously, but um, I was, you know, I would I spend here and there and in, in, in large amounts. But uh, the I think the more money, the more money that I make each year, the, the smarter I get as far as like, OK, let me take I'm just making an example. I'm don't I'm not saying I got this, but I'm just making an example. So, OK, let me take one hundred thousand. Let me put it into, you know, investments and stuff like that. So like. The more money I get, I think the, the more smarter I get as far as like making sure that I'm good when it's all said and done. So is it like a is it a personal choice or is it someone that's like helping you or is it like you just asking someone else to put you on game that, you know, have made, you know, good investments? Like where does the I guess you say the guidance like is it self-guided? Is it coming from someone else that's been there, done that? Like where did, where is it coming from? Oh, uh, I say I say it's a little bit of everything. It's 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 myself, it's self guidance, and it's you know, uh, I mean, I got a couple a couple friends that I you know been around the block a couple times, so I I I kind of put myself around people that's basically I put myself uh, around people that's kind of like richer than me as far as like you know in, on the outside world. But um, yeah, definitely definitely a couple people to help you. You you need people like I said, like you said we talked about earlier with the help thing. Like you you need people to try to you know, help you try to navigate whatever you want to do. You just got to find out what you want to do to, that's the hard, I think that's the hardest part, find out what you want to do outside of basketball and make sure that, you know, you got different, um, uh, different um, amount of incomes coming in. So your, your only, your only income ain't just basketball. Um. So going back to this, uh, the basketball stuff, like in Euro cup in the French league, like whatever it may be, uh, Talk to us about, you know, your, your favorite matchup that you've had so far, most memorable game where maybe you were going back and forth for somebody, like uh, who was it against? And just, uh, you know, talk us through that that uh, that experience. Oh, this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, I'd probably say uh, Monaco game, bro. Every time, we, every time we play Monaco, like, they know my team, my team, my team, bro. We, I mean, we got a lot of Americans. Like, we got four, four or five Americans, I think. Four Americans. But – the, all the other players are, are French players and, and and they pretty much white. So like Monaco, they got a team full of all black dudes pretty much. So they they talk crazy when you play them, you know what I'm saying? And the first time we ever played them, we played them at their at their house. Um in, in Monaco. I'm like, damn, bro, this Monaco is crazy, bro. Like it look, it look, I think it's better than Paris, honestly, as far as like looks, bro. It got it was it was sunny out there, everything, bro. Nice. Like you see yachts, like you see cars you never see for real. Like you see on TV, you see cars out there. Like uh, it's just, bro, it's just incredible out there, bro. So when we played them the first time, uh, they were spanking us in the first half, like probably about like fifteen. And you know, when you down fifteen in Europe, it's like damn, game pretty much over. But for the from that's what I learned from the French league. That's that's when I knew like the French league was up and down. But we walked it all the way down, came back, and uh. We ended up losing by like six, something like that. And uh it, you know, it was it was it was good bump, bro. Like that was my first time playing a Euro League team too. And it was at their house, bro. The, the gym was packed. Um 
But like I said, it, it was over a good game. I think they won like something like 89, 84 or something like that. I ended up finished with like 25 though. So I, I was I was pretty much cool from that standpoint, but I did want to win for sure, obviously. And then we, we played them. We played, they came to play at our house. We ended up beating them. We ended up beating them. I played good again. And then we turned around and played them again, bro. And like this, like it's like a mid-season tournament type of thing. Played them in the Leaders Cup. We played them again. So we played them. We played them in the span of four days, but we played them at our house and then played them again like four or five days later. And um, we beat them again. So we beat them twice in a row. No team is like no other team has ever did that. You feel me? So, um, and then again, I had, I think I had like 24 at that game. So like I'm playing good against snapping against your league teams and every game, bro, every time, bro, no matter, no matter how good I'm playing, bro, they, they always going to, they always going to talk. And, you know, we come from like, bro, that's, that don't do nothing but make me lock in even more. So, like, man, I like it, bro. They, they, they Monaco is probably one of my favorite matchups. We always play against them. That's tough. That's tough, man. That, that, that Mike James, that Mike James, but my, 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 I got to go back and watch the, the film from that game. It was funny. That's, that's nah, you, yeah, I, I, I definitely, I can send the film to you, bro. He, he only played uh, our third time playing him, though. He didn't play the first two, like, because in your league, they play so many games, like, and they care about your league pretty much more than, you know, the French league. But but teams that don't play in your league, obviously they care more about the French league. So, like, those your league teams, they might not play all those guys. They might not play er, er, all their guys every 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 night. So, they, they might, like, they let Mac James sit out first two games. Like, it's basically, but come down to it, bro. It's based on the respect factor, bro. However good the team is, is they, they ain't respect us. Yeah, they ain't respect us the first two times. So, like, they they – they they let him they let him rest, but we ended up beating him twice back to back. And the third time we did, the second time we beat him, he played. So like it was it was like all right, we got y'all number now. Yeah, facts. Um, you were able to make the All Star game this year in France too, man. I'm watching it. I'm like, man, that dream looking sweet out there. Like you feel me? It seems like they they it's a it's a really big deal, man. Like I'm like, damn, my boy really in the in the league down there in France for real. Um, what was that experience like? Just you know going through that experience All Star weekend. Um, you know, just yeah, just talk talk to us about the weekend and you know that whole experience out there. I mean, uh, bro, that's probably one of the best experiences I've been in, bro, since I've been a pro. Like that's the way they did it and put it together was 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 awesome, bro. They they it's in Paris. You go out there for three days. Um, the the gear the gear everything is sponsored by Peak. The the gear was crazy. Um, you know, you you get your you get your sweatpants, your shorts, your shirts, you get your your book bags, your sweat, your your travel bags, and then the jerseys was crazy. Like, bro, it was a good experience, bro. They had uh they had good media media um stuff going on over there. They was offering a different amount of stuff, like do you want peak shoe deals and stuff like that, bro. They 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 did their thing, bro. They had to stay at a nice hotel. Um, the venue was crazy, bro. It was like thirty thousand sold out, bro. Thirty thousand. Probably half of them was coming to see one beyond, but obviously, but. Um, bro, the, the way they did it, bro, was nice, bro. It was probably one of the best experiences I've I've ever had, bro. That's the crazy oh, man, the crazy thing is, I think when Biyama had like, yeah, I think he had like twenty seven, and, and he got the MVP because they won. But I had like thirty two. Oh uh, yeah, so you should have got that for if y'all the one. Yeah, you got that. I really should have got it, but you know it was it was what it was. Damn. Um, what's your take on Wembenyama? Like, you know, I haven't played against him. Obviously, it's all this hype from everybody in the states. Like, oh, is he really that good? Like, is he gonna be like that in the league? Like, what's your what's your opinion on on Wembenyama from from playing against him? He that bro. He that. He that bro. I ain't ain't no ain't no way around. I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. I ain't gonna hate. You know, I don't never do no hating anyway. But he that bro. Like his his his, his percentages from three right now is not good, but. He 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 could shoot him, bro. You gotta respect it. He shoot three. He shoot he shoot it from deep. Like he he bold too. Like he 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 not scared to do nothing, bro. He dribble like a guard, bro. Like I'm talking about like you you know how most big men they get a rebound and might push in transition. You press him and they lose, or you can steal it. Like it it ain't you not just gonna steal it sweet from him. Like he really get low when he dribble. <laughs> like he got moves. He got step backs. Like obviously he he's skinny and and and. They're gonna say he need to get stronger. Obviously, he's gonna get stronger. Probably, you know, just being in the league, he's gonna get stronger. But bro, he got everything, bro. Turnaround jump shots. He got fades. He got one-legged threes. You see doing on, on, on video. He got 
And and bro, he he like I said, bro, he he it's like he he got a he got a nigga mindset, bro. Even though he French, he, he his mindset a little different, bro. He he not scared to do nothing, bro. So kind of transitioning a little bit um, with everything that's going on with just men's final four, women's final four. I guess I would just be interested to hear your take on what's going on as far as Angel Reese getting a lot of backlash for just how she's been all season um, and just really, you know, just doing what she likes to do. Um, I've been keeping up with it. Uh, I mean, I, I know Angel a little bit. Like we, uh, she worked out with the same trainer um, that I work out with sometimes when I'm not at home. But uh, she, uh, I mean, I've been keeping up with it. I think it's. Everybody, she getting backlash for for like for stuff that if another person of our color would do, like it, it wouldn't be this much, you know, this much controversy going on. But with the stuff, the stuff between her, her in the final four and her between Kayla Clark and what she did, and they, everybody was on her about you know taunting her and stuff like that. I don't, I don't really think it's a big deal. I think it's just like it's pretty much. I think it's it's pretty much because you see a you see a female stepping out of stepping out of their comfort zone. You know, with basketball, you never pretty see much. Uh, you don't really see a lot of trash talk in women's basketball, or like uh, a lot of stuff going on the internet like that. Like that's that's like that's out of the ordinary. But in men's basketball, you see that all the time. Like you see trash talk on the internet, you see trash talk in the games. Like you see people doing stuff. But for females, I guess it's like everybody see like they they not supposed to be doing it. Like they they getting out of their body. Like. I don't, I don't see she doing, I don't think she doing anything wrong in my opinion. What you think, Andrew? That's the thing, though. I, that, I was going to say, I think that's the thing, though. So going to, to Quinnipiac, you got to, you know, big up my school right now. You know, our women's basketball team was like that. Like, they went to the Sweet 16. They won the MAC three times in four years. Um, They, they played UConn in the NCAA tournament, like, all that. So, like, one of my best friends was Aaron McClure. Shout out to Aaron. She's a big supporter of all facts media as well. Like she was one of the best players on our team, and she's from New York, like Queens, like, and she talks trash, like, you know what I'm saying? So, girls do talk trash in basketball. The thing is, it doesn't get blown up like it does in men's basketball when you see Westbrook talking trash to uh, Dylan Brooks the other day, or you know, somebody in, in, in Draymond Green talking trash. People would assume people would assume that women just play basketball. And don't. It's like nah, they, they they talk trash too. Like Angel Reese been talking trash, like. It was a clip of her uh, at Maryland that went viral. They were playing against Ohio State. She talked about saying, yeah, you don't even get down like that. You, you, you ain't like that. Like, yeah, you, you and she doing a little too small to the girl. Talking about you only got eight points. Like, she was at Maryland doing this. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's been there in, in, in women's basketball. People just, I think it's like, because it's on the main stage. I think also people got people got too hyped with this Iowa versus LSU thing. It was literally like, it, it it left being a basketball game and it was like literally like white versus black. It was like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it went to. Exactly. So people, people that like was in the group chat talking, my friends that never seen a women's college basketball game in their life is tuning into the game, talking about, oh yeah, I'm rooting for LSU. I'm like, you wouldn't even like the sports, like you know what I'm saying? Like, but it was they was rooting for you know LSU, obviously just for the culture. So I think um you know, I think that's really what what it, what it was. But you know, when it comes to Angel Reese, I think that I respect it. Like, feel me? She's from Baltimore. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying yeah. I respect it, bro. When you, when you, even when you, like, in the Brussels League, bro, that's how they talk in Baltimore, bro. That's just, that's just how they act, bro. Like, but when you, obviously, you know, when you first seen the game, that's the first thing you notice. Damn, Iowa got all white. The LSU got all black besides, you know, the one Asian girl. That's the first thing you're going to notice when, you, you know what I'm saying, just looking at the game. But. As far as her, bro, I don't feel like she's doing nothing wrong, bro. Like she competing, she she just act how she act, bro. Like people, it's like people want to see, they want to see how you act in, in in public and 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 how you act. Like they, this is like they expect you to change me when you're in public to front when you by yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got to act a certain way, like you got to talk a certain way, stuff like that. Like I never was a big fan of that, but I understand how it goes. It's just it's just the world we live in. Not nah, facts, bro. And then they like. I don't know why folks act like women aren't competitors. Like they're not, they're not athletes. Like they're gonna talk trash just like men talk trash. It's not like it's no different. You feel me? They had the same emotions that we had, man. And it was crazy because I seen this clip that went viral. I don't know if y'all seen it, but <laughs> 
it was like a um they did a split screen and on one half it was Iowa warming up for the game and they were all singing a high school musical song and then they showed LSU and it was listen all to Boost to set that bitch off. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, it was really it was literally like a tale of two separate worlds, man. So I think that's really why it's a big deal because everybody was just so, two polar opposites. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like people just trying to. Once again, they, they, they're showing their true colors, you know, as far as what side of the fence they truly on. But at the end of the day, you know, she ain't doing nothing wrong. I think Hoopers know that. People who understand the game and the art of basketball know that. The art of competition know that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is. I, I, that's my take on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I agree. Not facts, man. Um, all right, so we got a, a new segment on here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this is the What's In Your Bag podcast. And this segment is kind of a – a play on the name, you know, what's in your bag. So it's two part of question for you, James. You know what I'm saying? The first question is, if you're going out, let's say, let, let's say you got a road game, you and you and we'll say Monaco or Paris, or whatever, right? You're getting your fit on, you know what I'm saying? What's in your bag, man? Talk to us about the fit. What you what you throwing on for a night out in uh in Paris? <laughs> <laughs> uh I mean it it, it depends, bro. Like Depends on how I'm feeling today. It might most most of the time, you know, I have some nice jeans on, some nice shoes and a shirt. But if you you want to go into detail, like what what else? Details. I need details. What's the shirt? What's the jeans? What's the kit? <laughs> uh, bro, I honestly, I mean, I got I got a couple pair of mirrors, but uh, I be I be rocking a lot of serenade jeans. I don't know if you know, but what that is, serenade. I hit when I hit. Put me on. Put me on. Yeah, I put you on. They they I see you on on, on Instagram, but it's. They some nice jeans, but they for the low. They like $90, 100 dollars. But I got some nice. I got I had ball made jeans when they came out. I got some Amiris. Um, but all right, I'm I might go. I might go. I'm a black jeans type of dude, so I might go Amiri black jeans. I might go. Depend on depend on what kicks I'm wearing. Depend on my shirt. So it depend. I might go some some off white kicks. I might go my Palm Angel shirt or something like that. But okay, nothing too crazy. Okay, nothing, nothing too crazy. I like it. I like it. I like it. Good, <laughs> right there. good, good flex right there. Um, same question, literally. Like, so, what's in your bag? Like, you throwing on a crossbody bag, right? What, what, what you throwing in the bag? Like, for me, if I'm going out right, I'm throwing on my my little crossbody jump. Actually, I got an actual. I'm I'm a tote bag guy, so I'm I'm a big <laughs> tote. Bag. So I'm a, I'm gonna make sure I got my charger in there, my my chapstick in there. You know what I'm saying? My wallet, obviously, but. For you, man, what you doing in your bag when you're going for a night out? You know, what I'm saying you got any products, some clones, like what's what's going right, on? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a always I'm a always have my wallet. I'm a always have my chapstick. I make sure I, I gotta have bubble gum, um, cologne. Obviously, those those the main those the main jumps right there. And then uh, I I might make sure even even without my wallet, I might make sure I had cash in my pocket just in case you know anything happened. So that's probably that's probably the main the main the main few things for real. Other than that, I don't yeah, I don't really need much else. Heard you, heard you. <laughs> matter of fact, matter of fact, we got here from Alexis, man. Alexis, what you what you doing in your bag? Where you going out? Let me see what you want, man. Give what's, Jeremiah, what's, the, give what's, what's the what's the scenario? All right, let's see. Let me paint the picture for you, right? Don't back- don't play, Andrew. <laughs> Oh, we we back in the city, right? We back in the city. Rose right? Bar. Back. We going to Rose Bar tonight. <laughs> what you? What you? Wait, what am I putting in my purse? What you putting in your purse? And then, and then and then give us the fit after. Give us the fit after. Um, y'all be making fun of the girls with the mini bags, but the mini bags be clutch because it's like, why am I bringing a big? You know, so I be taking a yeah. little mini bags. Uh, ID. What's the bag? What's the bag? What's, the, what's what's what we going with? Um, it depends. Cause usually I just bring like a little black one. Cause I mean, it's like, it's easy. Cause it's already like, it's like a go bag. Like you already got it. Like you already nah, got it. He, he, he want, he want to know the, he want to know the brand though. Thanks. What's the, what's the brand? What you stepping out? What, what, you what's want the me to flex so bad. You want me to flex so bad. So, okay. So I like, so it depends. So it depends on what the fit is. So if it's more so like I got on like sneakers a shirt and whatever then like the little crossbody like the Prada one with the little the mm. little pocket thing to dangle off you know what I'm talking about the little hey, her, her Prada bag okay yeah uh-huh. yeah, yeah, I know. Know. Is that what talking about? yeah so that 
Yeah, so usually card, ID, keys, and lip gloss. Honestly, I don't really need a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, it depends on what's happening because they last time I went, they took my taser, so don't need that. Um, so yeah, other than that, yeah, just cards, ID, and lip gloss, really, and keys. I forgot about it. Yeah, I forgot about the ID. I forgot. I need my keys and ID. I'm tripping. Yeah, you got to really ID. Yeah, because I mean, at, in DC, they're going to they're gonna ID you, even if you look like you 36. Like, they're going to. Not facts. That's a fact. It's that, really. Um, so they, they took your taser? That's crazy. They, they didn't give it back to well, you. I didn't really mean, I didn't mean to bring it, honestly. It was just, it was a day where it was like, all right, we're going to brunch, we're going to the mall, then we're going to circle back to road. It was just like, we just was like, we're doing this, this, and this. So I wouldn't even brought it in there, honestly, but it was just was like, it's here. <laughs> they finna take they didn't it. give it back. When Rose Bar was over, I wasn't thinking about getting my taser back. So oh, my bad, heard you, heard you. She's out of mind. I'm just saying, like at that point, you don't already, you know, you've been in a section, you don't already have hookah. It's two o'clock. I'm not thinking about my taser. Big, big section girl, big section girl, heard you. Heard <laughs> big section girl. All right. Now, the second part of the question is, what's the fit like? You feel me? Because we we seen the we seen the, the gram, you know what I'm saying? You be stepping, so give us the fit for a night out on the town. Matter of fact, we're gonna change the locations. You you go in the park. So you know, park a little more bougie than Rose Bar. So you know, what you putting on? It's so crazy about how everybody hypes up park because when I had like sometimes like when I don't no, not saying that park is not fun, but oh, no, 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 park, no, park is a time. I'm not saying park is not fun, but like when I don't want to drive. Sometimes I have my dad drop me off. No shame in my game. If I don't want to drive or if I don't want to Uber, my dad will take me. Right. And so like he, we pull up for the first time and he's like, oh, me and your uncle used to come here. So it made me realize like park is like for the older crowd, but we just turned it into our thing or whatever. But anyway, um, it depends. So like if it's winter time, I like the, the dress with like the boot look, like the, the knee high boot with the dress look. I like that. Um, if I'm just like, Mm, I'm here but I'm not really not trying to really be here then I wear like a dress and Rick's like it just really depends on like what the what the, the vibe is big big Rick always mm. you hear she said with the Rick's oh my you god you asked the question you asked the question <laughs> hey listen okay hey I listen. feel like if you're if you're a girl and you're not wearing and you don't necessarily want to wear heels that day you still gotta like you got to make up somehow you got to make and sometimes I just I don't want to wear heels especially if I know we're going to park but we're going to park for brunch then we go on a law society for day party and then we circling back to Rose but I'm not wearing heels the whole time so but if it's like a one and done I'll wear heels but if you're not gonna wear the heels then you gotta the substitution gotta be yeah you, know, you gotta be comfortable for sure I respect it substitution gotta be up to par like you can't come with ASICs so it's like what hmm. you gonna do period Heard you, heard you, man. See this, this advice we need. Oh, ho, 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 ho. We we're not gonna skip that. What you rocking, big boy? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was about to get off with a fast one. I was about to get off with a fast one. All right, so like I said, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big tote bag guy. So tote bag definitely gonna have the, the cologne in there. I got the YSL cologne. You know what I'm saying? Good, good smells. Good smells for sure. Um, you know, I got the beer too. You know, so I'm gonna have my brush in there. You know, good brush. Yeah. Good brush, a good, good, good comb, you know, in the tote bag for sure. Make sure my, my face is proper. Um, the clothes, get to the clothes, get to the clothes. You dancing around the clothes. It's a two-part question. I'm getting to the bag first. You know what I'm saying? Listen, we need these, we need these bag sponsorships. So we got to get the what's in your bag first before I get to the clothes. Okay. Boom. Like I, said, I always keep my tote bag handy too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Think so, rich, look poor. But you looking yeah. rich though. What you putting on? Hold on, I got my mask in the bag. Oh, we gotta have a mask because you know in Japan it's just cool. it. Hold on. I got the shades. <laughs> I got the shades in there. You know, I got the shades. It looks like it looks sweet. You know what I'm saying? Always oh, gotta be prepared. Throw the shades on the club, you know. The, the shades mean you, you mean. Hey, you mean. Oh, <laughs> um, what else I got in here? Oh yeah, this this is a gem right here. Y'all don't even know about this. See, look, the YouTube gonna get the high to go. Feel me? I'm prepared, tied to go. If I get a stain on my shirt, we always ready for White the White ball, John. I, I, I don't carry it, but I've I seen it before. Big facts. And then, got to have a hair tie. Never know when you might need that. So, that's, that's the bag. That's the bag now. So, why? Okay, question, question. No, that tote bag is so big. So, I know mm -hmm. it's air still in the bag after you 
put everything in there. So why why not downsize a little bit? Maybe I do need a downsize, but I don't know. I just be, ah, it's just versatile. You know what I'm saying? It's white. I could wear it with a bunch of things. Even though I got the green, you know, I, can, I feel like it's, it's you know, it's neutral. I could I could do a lot with that tote bag. You know what I'm saying? But I might downsize and get the little crossbody jump. I could do that. It depends on where I'm going. So um, as far as the fit, man, as far as the fit, what I'm rocking, man. See, I'm not I'm not big money like y'all, man. I'm a I'm a Zara kind of sore, you know what I'm saying? So the, wrong the shirt, the shirt probably gonna be a, a good, a good all white, our all white Zara, Zara T. Um, I'm a big fan of the the either the flare bottom pants or I like to have my ankles out. I'm a big ankles out guy, you know what I'm saying? So I'll be rocking the capris, the capris, um, and then the shoes. Uh, I like J's, obviously some J's or my, my new, obviously summertime. So I like to wear, you know, something that's comfortable. So I got some new balances that I like, you know what I'm saying? Some white new balances, um, with some like neon green that I like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and other than that, like I said, throw my shades on and I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? That's usually, I, I keep it real simple, man. You know what I'm saying? I keep it real simple. Is there a Zara? You definitely, you definitely like having the ankles though. I peeped that. Big facts. Ankles always out. You know what I'm saying? Always out. <laughs> is it Zara in Japan? Sure is. And they got it all. They got, they got, they got, they got, I, they got stuff in Japan that I've never seen in the Zara, like, uh, back home as far as just like, they, they, they're real big on the oversized stuff in Japan. Um, like I said, the flare bottoms, kind of like the, the gallery look, um, that whole like essential look, they, they, they got that over there down pat, you know, so you can find a lot of that stuff. And they rock a lot of black in Japan too. So you can find a lot of just like different black bubble coats and vests and that type of swag. That's their swag over there. So I ain't gonna yeah. lie, that's 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 a perk about being overseas, bro. Thanks. They they it's a lot of stuff in Paris. Like when I when I, if I go shopping in Paris, like it's a lot of stuff that that you might see in some designer stores that you're not gonna see at home, or you might not see. You might it might be sold out online, but they have it. Nah. Yeah, because like with in the DMV. As soon as something starts trending, everybody go buy it. So the Zara in Annapolis Mall not gonna have it. The Zara in Tyson's is not gonna have it. And then you don't know what the item actually calls, so you can't go online and buy it. So I definitely do think like one thing about the DMV, like yeah, the DMV has like a distinct style, but once one thing starts trending, everybody go buy it. Yeah, facts, facts. Fact. Yeah, now I can't leave out the details too. Matter of fact, I left it, I left it out my fit. I'm always, I'm mean, you always catch me with the details. I got the little bracelet. I got a little Gucci brace that I love to wear. I always gonna have a ring on, you know what I'm saying? My chain um, and my watch, a good watch. I'm always had details, you know what I'm saying? Cause a, cause a fit is not complete without the accessories, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta top it off with the accessories, you know, for the for the night out, for sure. For sure, man. Nah, man. Um coming chain. I know you, I know you got bust down chain. Hey, hey, listen, that that's you, big money. You know what I'm saying? You out there with that that that, that Euro Cup bag, you know, you got the Cuban link, good bust down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bust down, Cuban link. <laughs> I'm broke, man. You sweet. Hey, you ain't got a lot of me. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got a lot of me, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, man, nah, I'm a, um, like I said, man, this this has been a dope conversation, man. We had a lot of fun. Um, before we get out of here, man, we always ask our guests one last question. Um, and that is who is somebody you think we should have? On the What's in Your Bag podcast, but whoever you say, you got to help us get them on. So you got to get in your point guard bag and drop the assists off, you know, and help us get this person off. So, who's somebody you would like to see us get up on here, James? Oh, uh, yeah, you had QC on here before. You had Quinn Cook on here yet? Max, he was our first episode. First oh, okay, episode. okay, bet, bet, bet. I was gonna tell him get on there. Uh, who else? Let me see. You got TK on here? Trey Kelly? Nah, you got Taiwan? Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't had him on yet. I haven't had him on yet. Yeah, I, I tell him. He wanna, I can tell him he's from around the area, too. So, you, I mean, you know he's from around the area, but I can tell him. Yeah, I can tell him. Yeah, I can tell him get on, yeah. Say less. Say less, bro. Say less, man. Um, This has been a bunch of fun, man. Like I said, it's been dope just catching up, you know, hearing your journey, man, from high school to college, all the way up through the pros, you know what I'm saying? So definitely want to make sure we always big on giving flowers out, man. And like I said, from knowing you since shit, we was kids back in the AU days and seeing where you are now, man. Super proud of what you've been able to do with your career and uh, how you've been able to just continue to get better and elevate, you know, throughout every level of your professional basketball career, man. So 
keep doing what you're doing, man. The city's proud of you. Us at, at All Fast Media is proud of you, man. And like I said, we're gonna keep keep going up, man. I'm I'm, I'm intrigued to see where you're gonna be our fight, where you're gonna be five years from now, ten years from now, and we're gonna run this back. You know, what I'm saying when you in the Euro League or in the league, or whatever the case may be, doing what you're doing, man. So, like I said, thank you for coming on today. You know, really appreciate it for sure, bro. For sure. Thanks for having me, bro. I appreciate the opportunity. It was a great convo with y'all. And, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing, bro. I see what you're doing on and of the court. You you know, you're bringing different avenues and, and giving exposure to, you know, to, to, to people back at home. So I appreciate that. No doubt, bro. No doubt, man. This has been another episode of the What's In Your Bag podcast presented by Bet Online. As always, remember to like this podcast, subscribe to this podcast, give us a five-star rating. Whatever you're hearing this podcast, it goes a long way. And stream my guy pull up Tay's music, man. He got a new album out right now. Let me see y'all go go ahead and stream that, man. Until next time, folks. Peace. Suave. 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 I've been in my bag for a while, I'm invincible Story of a young boss, grinding shit critical Calling on my bros one time, cause you special I had some hood dreams and right rounds for my mentor Every target that I shoot is on point like a pencil Different routes change relationships, I'm so sorry Came up from the trenches and I made it, I say hardly now